going on guys? Welcome to the channel. Today we are going to install the components for the 2017 performance upgrade kit. The larger fuel pump and the intercooler. Um, I am not going to be installing the exhaust portion because I have a free-flowing aftermarket exhaust already but you can find all of the instructions on how to do this straight on BRP's website. Um, I'll post a link directly to those instructions below um, so you can go ahead and check out how to do that on your own. But for now, uh, yeah, let's jump into this and see how far we can get. So the first thing we're going to do is install the fuel pump. Um, I'm going to unhook my battery because fuel, vapor, and a possible spark is not a combination that I want to risk. So I highly recommend that before you get started on this that you unhook your battery as well. Your battery, in case you didn't know, is located behind your passenger seat. And to get there easily, I'm going to go ahead and just pull out these four bolts here on the seat which will allow me to rock the seat forward and I should be able to get back there pretty easily. So the instructions say to get started on the fuel pump we're going to take this panel off right here that's above the passenger side glove box. Fuel pump is located right under here. They recommend that it is less than a half tank full. It is a T27 Torx bit. You can pop these out around here and then there's a couple pull pins right here. Uh, and then this thing should come off. So let's take a look at it. This one, this uh, T27 Torx here, actually has a nut on the inside. So there is a bolt here and a bolt here. And this piece should come right off. These look like they're 10 millimeters also. Looks like we can just slide it out of the way and leave that other nut in there. So when we get in here now, <clears throat> we're going to unhook the electrical connector to it, and then the fuel hose is right here. So inside the top of this piece right here, there's like a little uh, button. I just reached my finger in there, pushed up on it, and I felt it unlatch. Pop right off. So <clears throat> inside here, once you get this red clip off on the fuel line. Inside there is another little black clip. Uh, I had to get in there with a flathead screwdriver and pop it backwards. So I got it to pop out. Oh, actually, it looks like it broke. Uh oh. Looks like it. It was still holding, so if I can squeeze it back in, I might be alright. And there we go. Fuel lines off. Now you want to make sure that you don't get anything in here. So maybe get like a rag or something that you don't mind getting all stinky with gas. You're going to get rid of it and wrap the fuel line up. So the next piece is to remove this fuel pump locking ring. Spring loaded. Let's see if we can't weasel this out of here without taking this plastic off. You got new seals with the kit, so don't worry about getting those off.
old fuel pump out. So before we get started putting things back in, you want to make sure you wipe up the ceiling area around here of any spilled fuel and dirt. At least to the best of your ability. So when we go and we grab the new fuel pump here, you'll want to find the bezel seal thing that comes with it. Uh, it should be in that little pack and you'll want to put this on here with these little uh, bevel pieces pointing down this way. And then when you fit this back in the hole into the gas tank, try your absolute best, as I will, to not bend this. You could get inaccurate readings on your gas gauge. So it might be difficult to see, but just to point out, right here, let me dust it off, there's a line on the fuel tank. Proper orientation for the fuel, fil the fuel pump, there's an arrow right there on the top of the fuel pump. You want it pointing at that line. So when we tighten the bezel back down, keep in mind how it's facing. So it'll be about like that once we get it tightened up. Got that all tightened down. I'm gonna hook up the fuel line. So this plastic piece broke. I'm hoping that I can get it in there anyways to have it do its job. Red one back on there, I'm going to hold them both on. Alright, it's on. Last but not least is the power connector. And with that, we have put in the new fuel pump. I'm not going to button it all up um, because this thing is, this bezel is kind of, it's just awkward because there's under a lot of spring uh, tension from the fuel pump on the inside. And it's difficult to really know if it's going on evenly or if you're cross threading it. Uh, so I'm going to leave it unbuttoned until we start it when the project is done to make sure that I'm getting good fuel pressure. Uh, there's no leaks or anything. So. Yeah, moving on to the intercooler. So, to get started on the intercooler, we have to take the service panel off between the seats, which is a good time to show off this Can-Am bag. Uh, it is really, really nice. It's awesome. If you guys are looking for extra storage, that bag rocks. Highly, highly recommend. So to get the service panel off, super easy. Just grab a corner and pull. Pops right off. And there's your turbo too, in case you've never seen that. You'll get familiar with it during this install though. Now we are going to pull the airbox cover off. Ugh. Well, you might have to yank. <laughs> to get that off, to take a look at it, there's this little latch right here lift up on it pops right off nice like probably a good idea to clean this thing once in a while yeah I'm gonna take the inner cooler cover off now it's just like the uh, other cover there you just yank on it pop her off now once we have those covers off come down here 
going to loosen up the connector that's holding the pipe on, the inlet pipe, right there. Very important that you don't let anything fall down inside here. So it's always a good idea to get some rags and stuff those holes so nothing falls down, no dirt or anything. So apparently when I unhooked the uh, electrical for the intercooler, I neglected to turn on the camera. So it's already done. But this will actually kind of be what you're looking at. Uh, what you'll have to do is cut those um, zip ties. The kit does come with new zip ties. And on the other side of that hose is the um, intercooler connector. So you'll unhook it. And then when you hook up the new one, you just zip tie them right back up. And once we get that loosened up, you'll come in here. And you'll want to loosen up the one on turbo. Now that we have that off, come up here and pop these out. You can get rid of these because the kit comes with new screws. No reason to keep these. Now we're back in the cockpit. Take off the last two bolts that are holding on the intercooler. Once that's all done, this should lift out. Like that. Yep. Now we're going to want to pull this tube off to put on the other intercooler. Grab the new intercooler, red inserts out. Reverse the process, drop the new one in there. Now that we're back on this side, the bolts back in that hold the dinner cooler on. Now let's hook up the uh, electrical connector underneath. The new connector. So now we get the new zip ties that came with the kit and zip tie it back up to the charge pipe there. Now that we got the zip ties on, put the tube back on the other side of the intercooler. Last step is to put the plastics back on.
So on to adjusting the wastegate. Um, so with the new uh, fuel pump and the new tune, uh, we're going to be running higher boost. Um, even if you're just doing the, the normal 2018 uh, tune, it's still a higher boost, so you have to adjust the wastegate. Um, and the wastegate has a little actuator on it that has a lock nut and then a screw piece. Um, I'll show you when we get in there. But for 2017 uh, X3 cars, stock wastegate crack pressure is 6 pounds. So we'll take off the vacuum line and then we'll put on, we'll put on this vacuum hose where that line goes. And then we'll crank up the pressure and then we should see the actuator move at six pounds um, and then for the 2018 tune you don't I mean I guess technically you could get away without buying this uh, you could just go with what BRP suggests we'll find out how accurate they are when we get in there the actuator they say if, when you tighten it two and a half turns it should then equal seven pounds um, and seven pounds is what we want to be at for 2018 Let's uh, jump in there and see what it looks like. This is the wastegate, and this is the wastegate actuator. And this is the vacuum line. So the first thing you're going to want to do is there will be a clip on this. You'll have to cut it off. Um, there is a new clip that comes with the kit. So we'll pull this off. And then what we're going to do, <coughs> we're going to hook the Mighty Vac up to it. Um, to where it's putting pressure out, not creating a vacuum. And then we are going to be watching for the wastegate actuator to move. The first sign of movement should be at roughly 6 pounds. So we got the vacuum line hooked up. We got our Mighty Vac pressure gauge here. So we're looking for the first sign of move movement on that wastegate actuator. Should be right around 6 pounds. Right there, just moved. Six pounds. That's good. That means mine's set properly. So in order to adjust that, we have to release this little clip, so don't lose it. And then turn... Well, you'll, first we'll loosen this jam nut. And then we'll loosen up this clip. And then once this is off, the instructions say to tighten it two and a half turns. Two and a half turns should give us seven PSI which meaning, means it should take 7 PSI to open that. In order to get that jam nut, you're going to need 10 millimeter. Just to get it loose, and then you can just spin it up. So to make it easier to get this clip off, we're just going to pump it up to take the pressure off. So we'll open it up. Lose that clip. Okay, now that's off. This says two and a half tight turns tight. One, two, and a half. Seven pounds. Two and a half turns was right. The moment of truth has arrived. Tore this open real fast. Got my ECU back. We got the wastegate adjusted. Got the uh, ECU popped back in. Back there. I'm not gonna go button it up until until I know that this works. Okay, let's try this out here. A little nervous. Should hear the fuel pump kick on. Okay, that's good. I heard the fuel pump pressurize. Yeah, buddy, we just got back. Um, 
it's together and it runs. Um, yeah, so I got no complaints at all. We just did the zero to 60. I'm not gonna spoil it. That's gonna be a different video. It is faster and it better be right after all this work. Uh, hopefully this was informative and somewhat beneficial to you guys. Maybe some of you guys wanted to do this at home and check it out. Uh, like I said, I'm going to post a link to the BRP instructions down below as well. Yeah, thanks for uh, hanging out. Thanks for walking through this journey with me. Um, keep a look out for that 0 to 60 video. Uh, and I'll see you in the trails. See you on the dunes next April. So the next garage episode, I think, uh, is going to be shock therapy. So be on the lookout for that one. Um, so yeah. Thanks for stopping by. See you soon.